Guys, this is the beginning of my uh, core memory project. Uh, this time, core ROM, read-only memory, the core rope ROM as uh, used in Apollo Lander. Um, so this is a way to store data by weaving the, uh, the, the data practically in through the course. And this is a one-bit version that I'll be practicing on, or a two-bit version because it actually has a, a bypass wire here and a, a wire fed through. So we've got uh, two AC decoupled circuits and we can uh, plug one or the other. Uh, into the uh, signal generator, the, uh, the 555, and we'll see what we get. This is probably one of millions of 555 oscillator circuits out there on the net, so I just made one of them up. Um, used the values off the schematic I, I grabbed off the web, the first thing. Uh, powered up for 5 volts, and uh, the LED there is connected to the output, frequency output, so it puts out a square wave, and at the moment I've got it adjusted fairly accurately to a kilohertz and there it is a nice square wave in this pot here uh, we'll adjust frequency there we go I made one small change to the schematic I found on the web for the 555 oscillator um, the 10 nanofarad capacitor gave me a, a pretty low frequency range there and just by lowering that value to one nanofarad, that was uh, not only increased the range, but also the highest speed. So 2.1 kilohertz is the, the highest sort of stable frequency I can get out of it at the moment. I'll flash this schematic up clearly uh, in the video, uh, a screenshot of it. Um, the capacitor I was talking about that I changed uh, was this one here, down to one nf. Um, so there's your 555 circuit, power from 5 volts supply. Uh, its output has a current limiting resistor uh, fed to an LED to earth. So that's your, your DC LED output. And then an AC coupling to this primary, a single turn through a toroid. And then a 10 turn secondary. We have an LED here with no uh, current limiting at all. Um, so that is uh, supposed to be the core logic bit and that bit is set so we should be able to read uh, LED pulses out the other side but in this case following uh, Cos's example um, I'm just going to uh, send a frequency so we can read that bit manually with an LED Here we've got the 555 signal generator uh, providing an output for the primary for this ferrite and an LED connected to the output. After having plugged it in you can see our frequency output on the, the logic LED and nothing really happening on uh, the secondary output for the ferrite. Though you should be able to see it is lit slightly. Uh, what we find is Turn up the frequency, and there we go. There's a fairly sharp point where you actually get magnetic coupling through the transformer and light the LED. Uh, this little jig allows me to send current through the bypass wire. Uh, and obviously nothing happens. It wouldn't be coupled through that transformer. So this is the real deal memory that I uh, plan to weave data into and, and read back into a microcontroller, which should save me a little bit of program memory. And I've actually got two bytes woven, and it's, it's a, an all ones value threaded through every core. And then uh, the next value is 01010101, uh, which skips the first core, then gets threaded through the second core, then skips, then threaded. And you can see that every second core has two wires. And I've just got these let out to a little uh, header uh, with the decoupling capacitor on each wire and the earths are common. So I've turned the unit on and 
as I turn up the frequency you'll see that all LEDs light uh, however dimly uh, it does work and it can actually present more current to the memory by disconnecting this LED so now they'll be brighter there we go and I've wired this plug so you can swap it around the center is negative and just by turning it over uh, the other wire will be powered and then we have the other byte should be able to see every second LED is lit